Greetings to everybody. I am Yes Bhaskar, a teacher, a trainer and an academic system builder. With more than two and a half decades of teaching experience and more than two decades of training experience and with a wide exposure on working on academic systems and building academic systems, I am very happy to talk on outcome based education in this video which will help the people to implement outcome based education in their respective field and organizations. I am very happy to discuss about Mapping course outcomes with program outcomes, that is mapping COs with POs. In my previous videos, I have already told for each and every course, there should be a minimum of six course outcomes. And it has been mandated in accreditation documents that for a course, there should be six course outcomes. And for any undergraduate engineering program, there are 12 program outcomes which has been given by accreditation agencies. Apart from this, 2 to 4 program specific outcomes also will be added. Now, what is the main purpose of uh, this entire outcome based education process if you see? There are 12 program outcomes and 2 to 4 program specific outcomes and this is the target for the entire program. The entire program through all its theory courses, practical courses, all that which is being done in four years. Finally, its objective is to see that a person who is going to graduate from this particular program should possess the 12 program outcomes and 2 to 4 program specific outcomes by the time of graduation. Therefore, it is very clear, the entire accreditation process of outcome based education focuses on attaining the program outcomes. If the program outcomes are achieved, automatically it means that we are through in the outcome based education process and in outcome based accreditation. So the first thing we have to do is, how to attain these program outcomes? Program outcomes are attained through offering certain courses which are there in the curriculum from the 1st semester to the 8th semester and through these courses only the program outcomes are being achieved. One of the course will be related to certain program outcomes and it might not be related to certain program outcomes but consolidately through the offering of all the courses we should make it a point to denote that we have to guarantee that all the 12 program outcomes and beyond that the program specific outcomes also are being attained. So, we are going to attain the program outcomes through the courses which are being offered. Therefore, whenever a course is being offered, there are six course outcomes in each and every course. We have to attain those six course outcomes. That is a learner has to be given all the opportunity and all the material and all the kind of coaching the required assessment and evaluation should take place and finally we should say that these course outcomes have been achieved and automatically if you achieve these course outcomes it will not due to the achievement of certain program outcomes. So I am telling course outcomes are related to the program outcomes. In what way are they are related we have to create a master table. What is that master table? I will show it in one of the slides. Now let, let us look at how the course outcomes are mapped with program outcomes. As I told you, each and every course outcome of a course has to be mapped with certain program outcomes and with certain program specific outcomes. Here I am dealing only with program outcomes. Now if you take the first course outcome, the first question we are supposed to ask is, this first course outcome does it have anything to do with program outcome 1? That is, see this mapping will be done as uh, 
strong, medium and weak. Or they might use numerals as, instead of strong, medium and weak, they might use numerals as 1, 2 and 3. So one numeral will be for strong, another one for medium and another one for weak. So it all depends upon however you want to do, you can do it. But I will do it as strong, medium and weak. Now, if course outcome 1, compared with program outcome 1, if you feel that this course outcome 1 has something to do with engineering knowledge and if you feel that it is very strongly correlated, then you can put yes. Otherwise you have to put M if it is moderately. And if you feel that it is very weakly correlated, that is it is not that correlated with the program outcome 1. According to me, you can put a W or you can just leave it. We will only concentrate on those course outcomes which are strongly or moderately or mediumly, or mediumly correlated with the program outcomes. So, strong. The second program outcome, you take this first course outcome and you compare it with the second program outcome. What is the second program outcome? It is uh, problem th that is problem solving. Now, if you feel that this course outcome has something to do with problem solving, and if there is a correlation, if it is moderate, you put M, if it is strong, you put S, and if it is weak, then it is an option whether you want to put W or leave it. If I was there, I will just leave it because otherwise the entire table will get filled. Now, if I feel that it is mediumly correlated, I will put M. The first course outcome, if it has something to do with design and development, I will put it there. And let us say there is no design and development related things in course outcome 1, which is program outcome 3, which is design and development of solutions. Then automatically what happens is, I will leave it blank. So, engineering knowledge, problem analysis, the third one, design and development of solutions, the third one, I am just leaving it blank. The fourth one, investigation. If this course outcome has something to do with investigation, I will put it, whether either a strong or medium, depending upon the college. But if there is nothing like that, I will just leave it blank. The fifth one, if course outcome 1 deals with modern tool usage related to that particular course, then I will put strong or moderate or weak. But here I will put it as dash because I am just making an assumption that course outcome 1 does not have anything to do with program outcome 5 which is modern, modern tool usage. From PO6 to PO12, See, most of these things are skills related, soft skills related or something related to the society, something related to lifelong learning and things like that. Usually, the course outcomes will easily get related to course outcome, program outcome 1 to 5. But when it comes to program outcome 6 to 2, 12, then really some special effort has to be taken by the way of introducing systems, by the way of introducing certain assignment patterns and things like that, so that through a course it will be possible to map many of the program outcomes from PO6 to PO12. For example, PO12, lifelong learning. Through this course outcome, how can I teach lifelong learning? Let us say, there is a system in the institution which says that it is mandatory for the teacher of the course to give an assignment like this. A topic in the course will be given. Let us say a topic in this particular course might be given or it might be related to CO1 and a group of three students, for every group of three students the assignment will be different and these three students should work as a team and when they are supposed to work as an individual, they are supposed to work as an individual. Download 20 journal papers related to the topic which has been given as an assignment and prepare a report where 
the objective OMR, objective methodology and result of each and every paper is being discussed and prepared as a paper. The student will automatically come to know that what has been mentioned in the course is limited and there are thousand and one things beyond what is there in the syllabus which has to be learned and the student will get an attitude that they should keep on updating themselves and lifelong learning is a process which has to be undertaken in the entire profession during their career. So that is how we teach lifelong learning. That is one example. And when we divide the entire class into three per group and for each group if the assignment is going to be different, so automatically what happens is we will be teaching them individuality and teamwork which is the uh, program outcome related to individuality and teamwork the program outcome related to individuality and teamwork is program outcome 9 so I will say moderately this is being achieved individuality and teamwork and let us say even very strongly through this particular course outcome through the assignment which has been given we are able to say that this course outcome 1 is related to lifelong learning and this has been inculcated in the learning process through the, to the student. This is how mapping has to be done. Now the second course outcome has to be taken. Let us say the second course outcome when you are going to look at it uh, comparing it with program outcome 1, 2, 3, 4 and uh, you, you understand that uh, uh, program outcome 4 is investigation. Course outcome 2 is strongly related to investigation then automatically you put yes here and in course outcome 2 uh, it uh, demands that we have to deal with a certain modern tool usage then it may be strong or moderate like this it can keep on going finally you will get a table where by achieving all these things you will be through this particular course you can see here this course, course outcome 1 contributes to program outcome 1. Course outcome 1 contributes to program outcome 2. Like this. And let us say we can even have course outcome 4 might contribute to engineering knowledge. Let us say it might contribute very strongly to design. It might contribute really moderately to communication. Like this, a table will be attained and this is for one course you prepare this is for course 1 then for course 2 below this you are going to according to the curriculum you are going to prepare the same table for that particular course like this if there are 60 courses in the curriculum course of the table 1 for course of, uh, course 1 below that table 2 for course 2 etc table 60 for course 60 then finally what will happen if you just look at the table you can count 1, 2 in this particular table you are having 2 course outcomes which are contributing to program outcome 1 in the second course there might be 3 program outcomes contributing to program outcome 1 like that till the 60th course if you take how many course outcomes in general if 60 courses are there and 6 course outcomes per course so 6 into 60 which will be 360, 6 sixes are 36, so that is uh, uh, 360 course outcomes will be there. In general it is being said that for any program outcome at least 25% of the course outcomes should contribute. Uh, 25% of the course outcomes means 25% of 360. How much does it uh, come to? 25% of 360 means it, uh, if it is 300 it comes to 75 360 it might come to 80 so 80 course outcomes in 4 years will not be to the attainment of program outcome 1 to take the second uh, program outcome there will be a number of course outcomes which will contribute to the attainment of that particular pro program outcome so on an average if you see for under each and every course at least 25% of the course outcomes should contribute to the attainment of that particular PO. As I told you, from 1 to 5, it is it will get back. But from 6 to 12, unless there are specific 
systems which are built in the academic process which demands the student while learning to do certain things but then the mapping will be skewed that is more number of course outcomes will get mapped only to 1 to 5 and if you take 6 to 12 that amount of mapping will not be there this simply means that our approach is only towards achieving B1 to B5 and we are not concentrating on B6 to B12 that is not allowed each and every program outcome is equally important and we should really prove not only through the mapping through the supporting academic systems that we are having a very strong base which says that we are giving all the opportunity and we are having all the assessment and evaluation processes through the teaching, learning and evaluation process to ensure that enough is being done for the attainment of program outcome 1 to program outcome 12 and beyond that the program specific outcomes. This is what is the essence of the mapping which is being uh, uh, shown in this particular board and this is a very important part because based on this many things happen. If you are going to put S yes here, automatically M here, it never means that we should give less importance and more importance here. This is only for the sake of map mapping. When we teach, there is no partiality. Then we are going to make a calculation for the attainment of course outcome 1. Whatever value we are finally going to get, that will be substituted here. And when we are going to substitute it here, so automatically what happens? It will contribute to the attainment of program outcome.